That's a big word. That's a big word. And we went on to say how important is blood. And just to recap, we were talking about when Adam sinned, Adam disobeyed God. God told him not to eat of every tree tree that's in the garden except the tree that's in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So Adam could do anything he wants, eat anything he wants, but there's one tree that he should not eat of. And, you know, everything was good. God saw everything that he did in seven days he made, six days he made, the heaven and the earth created everything that we see in physically, everything physically that we see, hear, and touch. God created that in six days. And God looked God on his word, and his, look at his work, and he said it was good. If God said it was good, it was good. So, obviously, we know about the devil and we know about the rebellion because sin started in heaven through the rebellion of Lucifer, the bright and the, the morning star. Beautiful angel, beautiful. And he, had, he was there next to Jesus. But the Bible says pride grew in his heart. And he said, I want to exalt myself above the heavens. So he wanted to become greater than God. And so there came rebellion as well. He rebelled against God, his creator. And we see with his rebellion, he took one third of the angels, gathered them together, mutiny against God, and God wouldn't have it. So he was cast down. He was cast down to earth. You know, he was, he fought, and the angel fought, and he was cast down. Now, he wasn't very happy about that. And seeing that God has made his beautiful creation, furnish it and everything, he wasn't happy. Now, he can't, he can't do nothing to God. He can't touch God. The devil can't touch God. So he can't touch God, so he touches work. You know, we have a saying in Jamaica, but don't you Jamaican? <laughs> That's the word. That's the word. <laughs> so it's a similar thing that happened, you know. If you can't catch quad, she. If you can't catch quad, you catch That's right. So that's really what happened. He, he can't touch God. He, he can't, God is up there. He's down there. He can't touch God, but God's work is down here. Yeah. So, so he obviously, he had to trouble God's work, yeah. which God made in seven days, including man. So he beguiled yeah. Eve. And you know something? The devil's smart. Yeah. And then go to Adam, you know? No. So he knows what he's doing because Eve was the weaker vessel. And God did not tell Eve, God told Adam. So manipulated, manipulated Eve. Did God say that thou shalt not eat of the fruit? And Eve said, yes, God said we should not eat it, now touch it. One of the problems that we have is sometimes we, talk, we try to argue with the devil. You see, we shouldn't argue with him. We, when he comes to us, we should say, the Lord rebuke you. We don't have an argument. We should not argue with the devil because that's what Eve did. He said, but God said we should not eat it or touch it. Now she slipped off. She slipped there because God never said my mother touch. God never tell Adam say I mustn't touch. So I shall not eat of it. But now she's slipping off the line. She said, God said thou shall not eat nor touch. The God never said that. So from she starts slip off the line, sit and say, have you now? And so God said, thou shalt be wise. God knows that if you eat of this fruit, thou shalt be like God. Like, like God. So here comes temptation, pushing temptation before Eve. You can be wise as God if you just eat of the fruit. So that's how, that's how even now the devil manipulates us 
brethren, and if we don't know the word of God, we will be manipulated by the devil. He manipulated Eve. And he got Eve to, 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 uh, to come with him. And she said, she took of the fruit. The Bible says, and he, she did eat. And then she took and gave to her husband. And he did eat. So we know after they ate the fruit, they realized that they were naked. Just by eating the fruit. So they basically was, as, they, as one writer says, they were covered with the light of God. The light of God, the glory of God covered them head to toe. They were covered in the glory of God. But once they disobeyed God, the, the, the light went and they realized that they were naked. And obviously, when we always try to patch. If we see something not right, we always try to patch patch it to ourselves. But we can't patch we, only God. So the Bible says that they took fig leaves and they sold fig leaves together and covered themselves. That was not acceptable. And as we come in now say, almost all things by law was purged, was purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Now it is said that God came down and saw Adam and said, Why, where are thou? Of course, God knew where he was. And God knew he was hiding. He said, I heard that voice coming and I hid myself because I'm naked. So who told thee that thou was naked? As thou eaten of the fruit which I commanded thee not to eat? But God knows. So God wasn't happy with their covering. We can't cover ourselves. We have to ask God to cover us. And so God said, that God clothed them with skin. Now it is led to believe, we are led to believe, the Bible don't tell us everything, but we are led to believe that God killed a lamb and used the skin of the lamb to cover them. So it, it required blood. So that's where blood came in. That's where blood started. That's, where, that's because blood was needed because disobedience is sin. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. So God killed the lamb and used the skin. There was blood shed to cover. It was a temporary cover. And on and on we go. We see sacrifice was offered on Jewish altar to take away sin. But it was just temporary. Had to be done every year. It's not lasting. So that is where it comes. There has to be shedding of blood for sin, for remission of sin. Has to be shedding of blood. We are saved through the shedding of blood, but through the shedding of blood of Jesus. We're not saved, we can't be saved without blood. But Jesus' blood covers all. So, on we go. We see the time came when um, they, they were led to give an offering, Cain and Abel. Adam had two children, Cain and Abel. And the Bible says in the due course of, process of time, we read that in Genesis 4, um, Genesis 4 and verse 3 to 4, Hello, Jade. Hello. Genesis 4, verse 3 to 4. It says, In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought forth fruit of the ground, offering unto the Lord. That's Genesis 4, 3 to 4. And Abel also brought forth of the fatling, and of the fat thereof, and the Lord respected 
Abel and his offering. So we see the difference between two offerings. We see the two difference between the two offerings that was offered. Cain went to the ground and let's just say dig some yam and some some fruits and dashin and badu and all those things, whatever, and offered to the Lord. It was not acceptable. It was not acceptable. God had no respect for that sort of offering. But Abel went and found the fat lean, first lean of the flock, and the fat. So Abel went and killed, killed one of his fat lean, his lamb, offered it unto the Lord. And the Bible says God respected that. He respected that and respected Abel. So, in the, in the normal world, is that we can't just offer God anything we like. No. He won't take, it, it's not everything we offer God, God is going to accept. Do you see? Mm-hmm. God accepts us offering from the heart. A true heart. A pure heart. A righteous heart. A heart of love. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So, when we offer anything unto the Lord, we must offer from a pure heart. Yes. Whatever it is, whether praise or whatever, whatever we do, we must be from a pure heart. God will offer it. We can't be doing one thing, saying one thing, you know, have all these, you know, malice and guile and hypocrisy and all sorts of things and and the fruits of the flesh and expect God to hear us. He will not. He will not. So so Abel offered the right offering because he needed blood. He needed blood. And um, <clears throat> the Bible says that and the Lord said unto Cain after if we look to see Genesis 4, find Genesis 4, and let's read from 9 to 15. Genesis 4, and we just read from Sister Clark, or Sister, um, Sister Johnson, you can read. Genesis, yeah, Genesis 4, 9 to 15. Genesis 4, 9 to 15. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, a man my brother's keeper. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Hold that for me, please. Hold that for me, please. <clears throat> so, after God was dissatisfied with Cain's offering, you know what happened? He had a choice to repent and change his offering. He had a choice. Or he could not repent. And he didn't. And so when we don't humble ourselves with the word of God, in the word of God, and we don't accept it, put it this way, reject it. We reject the word of God. Then what comes into our heart? Sin and with sin, the devil, and with the devil, turn us away from righteousness, and that's what happened. That is what happened to Cain when he killed Abel, and we realize he is not God's favorite. You know, sometimes when we feel that we are not counted, we, instead of we humble ourselves, wait upon the Lord. The Bible says, "Wait upon the Lord, and we exalt in time." When we see that we are not numbered, wait upon the Lord, the Lord will exalt you in time. But sometimes we know I can't wait. And we we're just not accepting it. You know, our sacrifice is not good enough. It should be why not? Why not? You know, we can't we the thing is we can't argue with God. We can't argue with the word of God. You know? The word of God is sure. So because he realized that God was not pleased, he, he could have humbled himself. 
and maybe go back and say, Lord, forgive me. Let me, uh, let me do the right thing. But he didn't. And instead, he stood by what? Well, God, have to take it. <laughs> that may have. Whatever. Yeah, I'm just using my term. It's what may have, you know? It's not what you have. You know? God was not pleased. And the Bible said he was wroth. He was angry. So, the God says, if thou do good, if thou do good, it's not because of Cain, because if you do good, you will be accepted. If you do what is right, no matter who we are, where we come from, whatever, if you do good, that's what the Bible says, you'll be accepted. But if you don't do good, evil, sin, light at your door, and his, his demand will be unto thee. So, Anyone that does good, God is not a respectable person. God, sister, say, how are you? Bless you. God is not a respectable person. If you do good, if Cain did good, he would be accepted. But he did not do good. He, did, he didn't want to either, and he didn't repent. And you know what he ended up to do? What he ended up to do? God said unto Cain, Where is that brother Abel? But well, we know what happened to Abel. Yeah. Where's our brother Abel? <coughs> and he says, no, am I my brother's keeper? No, he's distant himself from his brother. But you see, this, this is the way the devil works. He didn't count his brothers. <coughs> you know, he wasn't a brotherly anymore because he was vexed because, you know, God accepted Cain's offering. Um... And he said, in verse 10, what hast thou done? He said, this is God saying to Cain, what hast thou, what has thou done? What hast thou done? You, you're not your brother's keeper. What have thou done? That's not normal. The voice of thy brother blood cried unto me from the ground. Now, we're talking about the power of blood. Abel is dead. But yet, his blood talking to God. You see the power of blood? He's dead. A dead man. What is blood crying to God for justice? Cut it to read, my sister. Where we left off. Um, yeah. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth. We shall open it her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Mm -hmm. When thou tillest the ground, just, it shall not henceforth yield unto her her strength and forgive and forgive and a fugitive and a vagabond. And a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face shall I be hid, and I shall be in a fugitive mm -hmm. and a vagabond mm -hmm. in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Go on. Yeah. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slay Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. You see how wonderful? Mm. You see? So, um, he, God cursed the earth. Mm. So when we don't do what is right, a curse is pronounced. Yes. A curse is pronounced on sin. A curse is pronounced on disobedience. The only way to reverse that curse is through true repentance. And um, God said to Cain, um, the earth is cursed. Um, thou art cursed. Thou art now cursed from the earth. And thou uh, which 
have opened his mouth to receive thy brother's blood by thy hand. That's right. That's, that's pretty bad, you know. Yeah. To kill, to draw blood. Mm. It's a serious thing. Yes. When you draw blood, you're taking life. Mm. And one of the commandments is thou shalt not kill. Mm. So, blood is a sacred thing. Without blood, we have no life. Mm-hmm. But obviously, because when... The reason why there's so much murder is because people have drifted away from God. Mm-hmm. Like Cain. Mm-hmm. Everyone's a murderer. Have the spirit of Cain. They drift mm-hmm. away. Yes. They, 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 they disobey. And because of disobedience, it put them in a mode of mind, which is ungodly. And thank you, that's the word. Ungodly, destructive. It puts you in a destructive mind. So it's so important that we know we stay in the word of God. We, we live in the word of God. We obey the word of God. We don't fight the word of God. But we accept it. And if we do something and the Lord is not pleased, let us say, Lord, have mercy. Like David did when he sinned. So... The bird, the, God cursed the earth because of the sin that he did. Because it's not in the plan. Murder is not in God's plan. You understand me? Murder is not in God's plan. Killing is not in God's plan. The only reason killing comes in is because of sin. The only way blood is shed is because of sin. Sin caused blood to shed. As we saw the first when Adam sinned, God had to kill a, a, a lamb to, sh- to, to remit that sin. So, shedding of blood is an important part of a remission of our sin. Um, so, uh, Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Because God cursed the earth because of one man. He killed his brother and God cursed the earth. Do you understand me? So you, one person, have all that burden because of you. The earth is cursed. You. So everything after is cursed because of you. Because you disobeyed. And you did not repent. And of course, he did not repent. He went further and killed your brother. He shed the blood of your brother. So he said, This punishment is more greater than I can bear because God pronounced this curse. And he, Cain said to God, Behold, thou, God said to Cain, Behold, thou art driven out this day from the face of the earth and from the face and from thy face I be hid and I shall be a fugitive this is Cain saying to God I'll be a fugitive in the days in the earth and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me so Cain was saying this punishment is more than I can bear I'm going to be a fugitive a vagabond. And because of me, the earth is cursed. You, you know, you, have, you feel that, that that burden is upon you because of sin. A heavy burden. And you know, this is how the devil works. Because I always say when, when someone commit, shed blood or commit murder, the devil is there giving them up, telling them, yes man, do it, do it. That, that's the right thing to do. And the murderer feel let him have someone company. So he's there giving him up. Yes, man. Commit that murder. Kill him. Shoot him. Whatever. When the act is done, when the act is actually done, when he's, the devil has got his, done his work and caused someone to commit that ton of atrocity, whatever, right? You know what happened? The devil gone. And that's why when someone commits a murder or anything like that, 
when someone commits a murder, the only it's only after the act is committed that they saw it. Yes. Do you understand me? It's after they commit the act, they say, God, what have I done? Why do they say that? It's because the person that, the, the, the devil that was gearing them to do it, has gone. That voice, that was talking to them, and said, yeah, man, go, do it. It's gone. So they feel so isolated, like a fish out of water. But what God said, God said in verse 15, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slay Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any man find in him shall slay. Oh, no, why is that? He's a murderer. Yet what God says, if any man slay that murderer, vengeance shall be upon him sevenfold. You see why? That was a sign of the grace that was to come. Because it was in the days of Moses that if a man blood was shed, then by man shall blood be shed. But when Jesus came, he says, I will repay Vengeance is mine. It, it's a different time we're living in now. So all those people who believe in revenge and killing for killing, that, that's not in the will of God as it is today in the time of grace. Okay? It said, any man find it clean, Cain, anyone slay clean, vengeance shall be upon him. But even though it's a murderer, even though it's a murderer, leave him alone. That's what the Bible says. Leave him alone. That is it. You want to say something, Pastor? Is it his own suffering there, isn't it? Huh? Is in his own suffering in his mindset that he said he's a murderer. Yeah. Nobody wants to be... Well, the, so this is the, so the God has pronounced already a judgment. You understand what I'm saying? God has, pronounced, God has pronounced him a judgment. God has done one thing. He cursed the earth because of Cain. And he said to him, a fugitive and a vagabond. We know what a vagabond is? A vagabond is somebody out there on the street with nowhere to stay, nowhere to, no, nowhere to come, nowhere to go disrespected by the world. A vagabond. That's the worst thing. A vagabond? Yes. Not even know where you're going. No, we, we, yes. yes. But that God was the curse that God pronounced. So in other words, that was God's judgment on him. If God has made that judgment, then no one should come and say, ah, oh, let's kill him. Pastor. Yes. And there must have been a reason why God wants Cain to be alive. And um, when we look in Genesis chapter 3, after the, uh, the sin of man, and then God cast sentence upon the serpent. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that seed is supposed to come from Cain, supposed to be from the tribe of Cain. Mm. And um, that is why God had intended that he should be preserved according to his divine plan. And uh, 
we can see some other incidents where Jacob and Esau, where the birthright was entitled to Esau mm -hmm. first. But the Bible says, Jacob I love. Esau I hate. Esau I hate. Um, in the sense of hate, we don't want to look at it that it actually could be some translation that means that. But we got to see that God did not intend to bring that blessing of uh, Abraham upon Cain. Upon uh, I Esau. Esau, Esau. Yeah. So it is Abel have been killed by Cain and one have got to carry the responsibility of coming down to the Redeemer that is to uh, pay the price for sin. And that is Christ is when you check it is coming, it is coming from that descendant of Cain. Mm. Yeah. So I believe that it is important for us to look on how God thinks. Not like how we would think that God should um, destroy because he had taken his innocent brother's life. But the brother was trying to help him. Mm. And he killed his brother. And as you made the point, it was not at the time when the judgment was given. No. By God that he took a man's mm. life. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So I believe that God intended. Cain yes, but yeah, yeah. I, I I agree. What I'm say, what I think is, um, God had pronounced His judgment upon Cain because of what He did. He, he, he pronounced a judgment on Cain because so God judged Cain and pronounced what should I say His um, punishment by cursing the earth and also. Whatever reason God wanted to preserve him, so that's why God said, Any man kill him, vengeance shall be taken sevenfold. But God wanted him to stay alive for whatever reason, but he didn't want anyone to take his life, even though he took the life of his brother. But God did pronounce that judgment upon him that he will, the earth is cursed because of him, and he will be a vagad vagabond and a, and a fugitive. And a fugitive. Correct, so totally agree. Do we don't God don't think like us? He said, "My word, my ways are not like your ways." So God think on a different level. We can't think. We can't think like God. We can't think like God. God think on a different level. We said, "Let us have the mind of Christ," so we can adapt the principles of the mind of Christ to His word. If we read it enough and we study it. And yes. We have that relationship yes. with God. Yes. We can be reflective of Christ's yes. life. Yes, yes. That's from a human aspect. Yeah. When it comes to a human aspect, we can think like God, like Jesus was an example, mm -hmm. because Jesus was a human. So when it comes to that, we can be human in God's form. We can be like Christ God life. in in Christ's form, in Jesus' form. Put it no, that way. We can be Christ like. In human form. In human form. Yeah. But we still can't reach the level of thinking no, no, about it. Just, we just want to reflect him as he said, he is the light. And it, it, the light ref, it, is in us. Yes. So we have been reflected of him. Yes. Because we'll start walk like him, we'll start do the things like him. But it says in the word, yes. he, he gives all power unto us, so we'll start doing the thing mm. that he has done. Yeah, but what Pastor is saying that our level of thinking is not. So yeah, even though right. we do try to obey, walk in the light of God, obey his commandment, you know, do what he would do, because if we're in a situation, so what would Jesus do? Mm. If, you know, Jesus tell you, if a man take your coat, give him your cloak, mm. or whatever, every man give back, hit you on the right side, give him this. So that is to show us humanly how we can live. But in, I think. Uh, When we have that relationship with God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we can think on the line of how God will deal with matters. 
Good afternoon, everyone. This is Rich Day for now. Turn the phone now. That God will deal with it this way because of the Spirit of God that is in us. Yes. 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 Now, there's an incident with David. David was chosen by God to be a king over Israel. Yes. While Saul was still in the office. Yes. But Saul was God's choice. Saul was a people's choice. Therefore, Saul turned out to be a failure. Yes. And he didn't do what God wanted. Right. Him. Right. So God sent the prophet down to Jesse's house to anoint one of Jesse's sons. Yes. And what the prophet saw. In his natural life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God made him to understand that. That's right. And what came, it's like if he did not get the vibes from God, he would not, from his no, human no, 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 judgment, no, no. anointed David. No. So that is the same principle with us today. You've got to have the Holy Spirit. You've got to have understanding of the Word of God. And none of us know the Word from here no, to there. No, 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 no. What Jesus said, that the things that He said to us, how He, when the Spirit of the true rule is come, mm -hmm. He shall teach you all, all things, things yes. and bring back all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. So it is important that the person understand how God would work because most of us would say Cain should be dead. He was wicked, killed innocent, but God didn't see it that way. Yes. Yeah? So acquaint us with the word of God and having the Holy Spirit to give direction is very essential in the life yes. of any believer. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So it depends how how, how deep we are, how how saturated we are in the presence of God. So God can use us, you know, but still for all, God knows more than we know, you know, and we have to, everything we do, we have to do by the leading. We should be at a place that we should be led by the Spirit of God. That's, what, what, that's what we want to be. Say, the Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. Yes. And he had the opportunity to kill Saul when Saul was hunting him down mm -hmm. to take his life. And his men wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. But David forbade them. And David cut off his, his, of his comment yes. and went to one and, and show him what he could have done to him. So that is the proof yeah. of the man that has got a relationship with God. Yeah? Yes. What did David say? Don't touch the Lord's, Lord's anointing. anointing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that is where the believer must understand that a relationship with the Holy Spirit to give direction, what to say and how to act and all that like, mm. is very important. Yes, yes, yes. We can, we, we have to have that mind, adapt that mind, but only when we get into the Word of God and, you know, in the presence of God, then we can have a mind like Christ. And we should seek to have a mind like Christ. Now let us go into a little scripture here from Exodus chapter 12. We are still on the topic of the, um, the power of blood. Exodus chapter 12 verse 1 to 13. Anybody find it? I would like to read the scripture now. Um, it's about the power of blood. Blood is life. Without blood we have no life. Exodus chapter 12 1 to 13. Somebody find it and so we read it. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 to 13. Check. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron mm -hmm. in the land of Egypt, yes. saying, This month shall be unto the beginning of month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, 
a lamp for a house, an house. And if the household be too little for the lamp, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make you count for the lamp. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, and he shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Mm -hmm. And he shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it mm -hmm. in the evening, mm -hmm. and they shall take off the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the house, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs mm -hmm. they shall eat it. Eat not of it, of it raw, nor sudden at all with water, mm -hmm. but roast with fire his head with his legs, and with his portents thereof, that's in the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he shall let nothing of the remnants until the morning, and that which remaineth, if it of mm -hmm. it until the morning, he shall burn fire. with fire. Mm -hmm. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your mm -hmm. shoes on your feet, mm -hmm. your staff in your hand, and he shall eat in the haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Mm -hmm. For if I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn mm -hmm. in the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, mm -hmm. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, Damn, and this day shall be unto you yeah. for a memorial, ye shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You okay. shall keep it a feast by ordinance forever. All right. Okay, so that's the first Passover. Yes. And the first Passover involved blood. Mm -hmm. Because it's one of the plagues that God brought upon Egypt. Yes. Because God wanted to really, to save his children from, from the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. And one of the plagues was the plague of the a slain of the firstborn, mm -hmm. men and beasts. Yes. So God said to Moses that they should kill a lamb and each house put it over the door lintel and along the door and when the destroying agent come it shall pass over and that is it is a type of Christ because we are under the blood and that's how we are protected in the same way that the destroying angel they destroy they kill all the firstborn man and beast in Egypt but God said Put that blood mark. That was a sign. Mm -hmm. That when the angel passed, mm -hmm. that house that had the mark, the blood, that's the power of blood. And the same thing nowadays, in these days, we're under the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if we're under the blood of Jesus, we are protected in that same fashion as the children of Israel were protected. Mm -hmm. So blood, there's something about blood. There's a power in the blood. If any of the children of Israel did not put that blood, that, that mark over the lintel, the blood mark, and did not obey as God according to what God said, the destroying angel would enter that house and kill everybody. So obedient to the word of God and blood. We can't be saved without blood. Blood is a very powerful thing. And the, we are under the blood of Christ. 
when we accept Christ, when we walk in his way, when we obey his commandments, we are covered under the blood. So we are protected. It's good. We are protected because of the blood of because of the blood of Jesus. So there's power in blood. And no one should take draw another man's blood. No one. And we see what's happening today, and it's all because man has strayed away. The world has strayed. That's why there's so much bloodshed. There's so much bloodshed now because people have drifted away. They, they drift away from God. And God has left them. And this is why we have bloodshed. If we was all in the plan of God and obey the word of God and live a life pleasing to the Lord, we'd have a wonderful world with beautiful people, but because of sin. Sin take hold. Disobedience take hold. In the last days, it says, perilous times will come. Brethren, what we see in these days are perilous. And I believe I tell you, it's the start. It's not going to get any better. It's just going to get worse and worse. So we who know God should hang on. Should cling close to cling, cling. Cling unto him. Because outside of God, there's nothing. No hope. We are exposed. You know? So many people these days are committing, taking their own life. And you know the fact that you take your own life, you committed murder. You're going to hell. People think that taking a life is a way out. It's not a way out. It's a way to hell. You're opening the doors to hell. Because you're, taking, you're shedding your own blood. So if we stay in the will of God, if we're obedient to the word of God, if we live to please the Lord, we have a blessed hope. Amen. We have a happy hope. Amen. And we don't need to live in fear. Because I imagine that those people, in the, those um, Israelites in those days, they put the lintel, they put the blood on the lintel, the destroying angel came, and passed over. Same today, brethren. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, God respect the blood. God respect blood because blood is life. Blood has power. And we should not think about anyone who take blood, take part of a person's life that God is in them. Whether for, whether for vengeance because now we know if we think about what's going on now, thinking about things in Nigeria now that so many Muslim people, they are killing Christians. Christians have to be running or hiding and they're just killing Christians. Muslim. They don't know God. There's no God in them. They are from the devil. Anyone who kill, anyone who kill is from the devil. Because God gave us life. And the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. So God came to say, say I came that he may have life. God, God, God never constitutes killing. It's not part of God's plan. But as I said, the devil... He used man because he can't, he can't touch God. So he used man to get back at God. But virgin, let's stay in the blood. Let's stay under the blood. And the devil can do us no harm. There is power in blood. There's power in the blood of Jesus. And you know, sometimes, you know, if any time trouble come upon us and we plead the blood, you know, so the devil don't like to hear talk about the blood of Jesus. Uh, so many times I've been in my situation and I'm in a corner and I said, the blood of Jesus. That's all I said. That's all I say. The blood of Jesus. The devil have to back away. Am I right, but I, I, Who has had that experience now? Who has that experience? When you're in a situation, it's the blood of Jesus, and you know Satan just have to back away. He don't like to hear about the He don't like to hear the blood of Jesus. You know, so the power in the blood. The blood is there to keep us and to save us and to protect us. Just as in, the, in, in Egypt. 
The angel has to pass over the mark where the blood is. And the devil cannot do us no harm if we stay under the blood. I will keep stay under the blood. And the devil can do me no harm. So brethren, we're covered. And it's security. We have 